Thanks everyone for coming. This is CESA in the lower elementary classroom. Um, we are both, Stacey and I are both first grade teachers. We'll introduce ourselves on the next slide. Um, but we're really excited to um, not just show you what CESA is, but really how you can take it to the next level today. Uh, I'm Kelly Perkle. I'm a first grade teacher in Cedar Falls. And I'm Stacey Wilkinson. I'm her teammate in Cedar Falls. We have both been teaching for 15 years. We've been teaching together in first grade for the last 10. Um, and both last year became CESA ambassadors. Um, it is an awesome opportunity if you use it a lot, love it so much like we do. Um, if you do have the opportunity to try to do the ambassador training, I would absolutely recommend it. Um, it gives you some uh, even better opportunities when you're using the app, and so we have found that those are fantastic. So. Features get unlocked. So our plan for this morning is just to kind of give you an intro. We assume most of you have used Seesaw if you're coming in here to kind of see how to go a little further with it. Um, and we're just going to kind of walk you through classroom application that we use all day long. Um, we are lucky we're one to one. So our kids all have assigned iPads. And we probably use Seesaw in every aspect of our day. Absolutely. And then questions and kind of next steps if you have. We might, we're going to let you guys watch this video. Um, we might go pretty quick through things, but um, we have all of our resources. Uh, we have videos and audio with a lot of our examples, and so that is on the resource page. So if there's anything that we go through too quickly um, or you want to look at again, it's all there for you. I love when that light bulb, that aha moment happens, when they've been working really hard and all of a sudden that light bulb goes off and they just, that click of, oh, I get it now. I'm looking for new ways to engage my students every single day. Seesaw, hands down, is the best thing that has ever happened to any of my third grade classrooms, whether it's math, writing, social studies, in art class, in music class, it works for everything. There's so many different ways that a student can create. They can take pictures, they can do drawing, they can record, and then have to go a step further and explain their thinking in a way that really cements the learning. Seesaw helps me because it gives me that immediate feedback of how the kids are doing. It helps me find those misconceptions in their lesson and then the following day to reteach those concepts that were missed. The Seesaw Activity Library is a go-to almost every single day. I love that I can get so many different ideas for activities that I can use right there in one spot. Students love Seesaw. They get very proud of their portfolio and they like to share it with other people. I saw that. I was at work at a meeting and my little notification popped up. I use the Seesaw Family app both at home and at work. It really helps me give an insight of what Ava is doing, not only in class, but also the way that she's thinking and her process and I think that's priceless. I love how Seesaw really allows me to get to know my students on a deeper level. They don't always want to stand up or raise their hand to talk in class, but I feel like Seesaw really allows them to open up and shine. Piece of <coughs> and your seesaw also is just so fantastic. 
for everybody. So obviously you know how Seesaw works. Students post, use the tools, teachers can then see what they're doing and then families get to view at home. Um, it's free on any device. Like we said, if you become an ambassador, it does unlock some extra features. And like Seesaw Schools, you can pay to have Seesaw a building wide that has the same features, but we found being an ambassador was an easier way to do that. This is kind of what you see when you're in a Seesaw class. Okay. So in a typical day for us, our students will use Seesaw for goal setting, completing assignments for us in the different areas, reading, phonics, math. They respond to prompts from us, writing <coughs> prompts, um, verbal prompts where they're recording themselves and recording their learning and their thinking or capturing photos of their work for their parents or for us. And then we as teachers will kind of show you how we're using it as almost a planning tool and uh, data keeping yeah. device. Almost our, almost our grade book, really. Yeah. Um, so in first grade, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of things uh, that the upper grades might be able to do through typing or writing, and that just does not happen in our first grade classroom. Um, you know, these kids, they need to practice different things. So something that we work on, of course, we work on our sight words, our snap words. Um, okay. Uh, so something we're going to show you is the way that our readers are practicing their fluency. Um, we work on just plain old sight words. We put those sight words into phrases. Um, we let them read books and record themselves. We do have a couple examples we're going to let you hear. We won't play every example for you. Like we said at the beginning, if you want to hear our kids reading their um, snap words or their reading, you can absolutely click on it. Here we go.
started to kind of publish our books that way, and then parents can download it as a PDF, and so can we, that the kids can then, um, we can print that way. Uh, there's other things. And they'll take notes on their page when we do editing. They can take a picture and do some editing right on there, too, with us. And I think it would be important for us to tell you, we are not, no first grader can ever go without paper during their day. Right. So we're not going to ever say, like, well, we don't even let them write on paper. Like, of course we do. But there are certain things, like, you know what? If this was in their desk, it's probably going to get lost in you. Like, and so why not just have it on an iPad right next to your piece of writing, um, you know, instead of on a separate piece of paper in your writing folder that falls out and doesn't have your name on it. So this is just an organizational tool for us. Also. And from a mom's perspective, if this stuff comes home, I'd probably throw it away. That's really true. <laughs> um, we've said we've kind of begun to use this as a teacher planning tool as well. Um, we as ambassadors can make things private so that only we can see them. A way around that if you're not an ambassador <coughs> is to create yourself as a student and only post to yourself or post to a sample student so that um, it's not getting pushed out or seen by anyone else. It's just for you. But we have begun to use it for different assessments. Uh, I take all my writing records digitally now. Uh, conferring notes, we've created a plan for that, and we both have used it for behavior plans. I think this piece for us in the last year um, has really been kind of a game changer. Like we, this is the area of our day where we've really um, been able to utilize these thought in ways that we didn't think of previously. So these are two of the ones that we created um, as our team. We've got <coughs> conferring notes and our guided reading notes. It's always in Seesaw, and I just copy and edit for every group that I create. I snap a picture of the book they're reading, what level it is, who's in the group, the date, some notes. I usually go through and figure out what the vocabulary words that I may have to talk about. And the things to work on are straight out of Lucy, whatever unit we're in that I'm noticing that that group needs to work on. I just take some quick notes. I can also then voice record myself if I'm like, check in with you know, Ray on this, or I'm noticing something. I do make observations. Like I said, Ray was anxious about the other boys reading fast. Ivan did great, some concepts. He's one of my ELL kids. So just know to go back, and then I can tell if it's a good fit or not. Conferring, same thing, but that's one-on-one. -on -one. So that's when I'm sitting down on the carpet. I just have my iPad with me, copy and edit. <coughs> they read with me and the things that I'm noticing about them as a reader. And I know, like, in the past, just changing from paper to digital, um, like, I had a binder or a notebook or sticky notes or uh, all sorts of other ways to confer with kids or keep guided reading notes, and they just, this is just easier. Um, it's easier on me, and it keeps me more organized also. Well, and then, so Kelly is also a teacher in my class on Seesaw. So if we ever have to share kids for guided reading, and so is Katie, our other teammate, we can all see these too. She can click into my class, listen to my kids, see, well, what has the student been working on so far? And now they're coming to me, what do I need to focus on? So it's just so much easier to communicate with each other. And too. that is an option that is available. I think as a non-ambassador Seesaw user, you're able to have two or three, two or three co-teachers in your classroom. Um, that has been really great too. Um, aside from us being able to share kids, we can share stuff really easily. Um, so, you know, Stacy had created, she's very good with the pictures and the cuting up of the things. And so I am just really easily able to go into her library and copy it, borrow, steal, uh, like all of her stuff and vice versa. And so that's been really great too. So like doing that and planning together as a team, we can create something together and then it's just there for all of us. <coughs> Running records, so um, a new feature this year that we've really enjoyed is multi-page. So now I can take a running record of an entire book instead of just one page or having to do multiple ones. I can snap pictures of everything and do the running record right there. I used to do it just right on a white screen before I was taking pictures of the book. So now I'll make notes what the level was, what the book is. A couple kids, if I really want to hear them, I just press record while I'm doing the running record and their voice will be on it as well if I want to go back and listen to it. Um, and then I usually just make a note what my teaching point was, what we focused on. And I try to do every kid at least once a week. And then they just have a file of running records that I keep private to me. Parents probably don't really need to see that. Um, one thing, of course, you know, being first grade teachers that we're checking up on is their snack words. That's what we call our snack words. Um, and so a really easy spot, again, just to keep us organized for us to keep those 
is digitally. Um, I actually did send these home to parents because they're always kind of asking me, what words are These are viewable. I keep them public. Yeah, what words are you working on? Um, can you send me a sheet of those words home every year at conferences? Well, it's been on Seesaw since oh, September 10th, so there you go. Um, but then something else that we like to do is see if the kids can write those words. You know, we've taught you to read it, and now we want to see if you can write it. And so right after this, um, this sheet in the kids' activities is a picture of them trying to write the word. And then we can go back and edit that and take another picture a month later and see if it's gotten better. Um, and so it's just, again, one more way to get organized to share with parents. Like, yeah. if you're looking for things to work on, it's right there for you. And we just color code by the month as we're checking them to see what they're adding. We've got a couple kids who this is their goal, step what's their goal. And I want to see, you know, often our goal is add five a week. Um, and I want to see if that's happening. Now then I go in and put, like if they know all the words, if their reading is complete, I put it up <coughs> so I can see it. So I know they know all of their K review words. These are just some other examples um, of things that we've done to continue to work on skills, to practice skills that we've taught. Um, this is not our direct instruction. That's happening during our mini lessons and during our small group. But there are opportunities for kids to practice things, you know, outside of sitting right with us at a table. So um, I think that these two over here, uh, the short vowel sort and the word noise, were activities from the Seesaw Activity Library. We did not create those. Um, I kind of think that the Seesaw Activity Library is like teachers pay teachers but better <laughs> because we're not paying anything. It's all free. It's all free. Um, and I think, Susie, you did that. Yeah, one of my other students, one of our activities was to see what words they could make with their power words. They apparently think bookshelf's a power word too, but I was impressed that he made Cook and Elf with that too. But then he just took pictures, dropped them into Seesaw, and then was like, okay, what words can I make with that? And added them on there. And that was one of his word work jobs that he did when he came in. And I think it's worth noting, um, already in the air, like our kids, if we say, okay, why don't you try to type that? Like, they're typing. They're all six and seven. Like, they're typing things. Um, and it really hasn't been as scary or as much of a hassle as we thought it would be initially. So then we'll kind of walk you through a little with math. We um, have gone a lot to working on the standards as opposed to using our curriculum so much this year. We're looking at new curriculums, and so we've kind of um, gone away from the worksheets that come along with our math curriculum. And so we've come up with ways that we can still assess the skills and be able to use Seesaw to do that. Um, we use it for right numbers, making numbers. This. Uh, add and subtract within 20 was an assessment that we came up with um, and then we can write their score right on there and what standard it goes with. We do clip from our um, our curriculum and put it on there because it's just for little check-ins to see what they can do. Uh, <coughs> and once we came up with that with fast math because they did not understand that uh, test in fast math so we wanted them to start practicing what that means to circle tens and ones. Um, I think it'd be worth sharing to you. Uh, so screen clipping, like that is our curriculum. Our district pays for their curriculum. So for us, that's an okay thing um, to use and publish to the kids. <coughs> I bet it takes me less than 30 seconds now to create an activity to send to my kids. If it's just something I'm screen clipping from our curriculum, it is really quick, really easy to do. Um, practice a few times and not have any of it. So any, you know, um, worksheet or anything instead of printing it, it, it is so fast and part of it. Um, it's just, it's been such a game changer. Counting collections um, has been a big thing in our district with early numeracy. And so we have, we kind of dove, dove into it last year and then this year, a little bit towards the end of last year and this year, we've decided how can we use <coughs> to document this, to have them talk through their thinking. So these are just some examples of they get their county collection, they do it, take a picture, they can draw right on there. Um, and then they can record their thinking too. Yeah, well, thinking out loud, that's... Uh, we talked a little bit about misconceptions. So one day I had a student working on something and... Well, we'll watch it and you can see what I'm doing. I, I, okay. I did five together and one and four. Then two and three and three to two. And it's like almost like... So what do they all equal? What do they all equal? 
So then she starts to add all of them together. I have five here. Did you have five every time? No. Are they always five? Single five? Yeah. This is a single five? No. Yeah. Is this a single five? Yeah.
have the students do is they create a clips. If you've ever used clips before, it's super easy to upload right to Seesaw. And so they have a little bit of guidance from us the first time they do it for the first conferences. Second conferences are more, uh, we're a little less restrictive with what they can do. I believe this is a second conference video that you'll see. <coughs> we just tell them we want them to document their learning. We tell them we want them to tell their parents what they're proud of and maybe set a goal for themselves. And then they kind of just go with it. and they go to their activities and they do it. 
one of the best things that they have is they do have a getting started with Seesaw in first grade. If you, um, if your kids have never used it, we had a lot of kids come from kindergarten who had never used Seesaw before. So it introduces all the different tools in five different activities. What? That's the next slide. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, and we did all five of these to start our year, and it was awesome. It was just started so basic, like activity one, and it's published right by Seesaw. Show what you know on math. They were literally like we just had kids. Use pattern blocks, make a picture, and we taught them how to take a picture on Seesaw. Um, and then it just kind of stepped up, like the second one, record your voice. Um, and I think it just kind of went from there. And by the last one, they're taking a picture, um, drawing on their picture, and then maybe even recording their voice to go along with it. So it just kept going step by step and introducing the kids um, to different ways to use the <coughs> new tools. And um, I, I think we've got full class school professionals now. Like they, they can they got do that. a lot of things. So ambassador, every teacher that submits activities, have, they have to be ambassadors. So this is what it looks like if you click on an ambassador. This happens to be my page where you would click on my name and you could see any activity that I created that you could take. So every ambassador has a page and then that's where you can find your activities. We like it because we can go to any first grade teachers, click on their pages and then we can kind of see they're probably doing similar skills to us and then we can pull activities from them. Um, well, obviously, one of the huge reasons that we started using <coughs> Seesaw in the first place was to do that connection with families. Um, and I think we've even changed some of the ways we've been doing that. Like last year, we sent a newsletter every month. We used to send it on paper and a calendar on paper. And you guys know in Iowa in January, when you type out like PE on Monday, music on Tuesday, library on Wednesday, of course it's going to snow and the whole thing's going to be wrong. And so instead um, of doing that this year, we are all pushing out this week, here's your specials. So you know what day, wear your PE shoes, what day not to wear white shirt when you're going to go paint in the art room. Um, we still send out a lot of information um, through email <coughs> as much anymore. Um, our building does send things out that way, but that stuff that um, it's just easy to sit there and push it out. Like, don't forget your library mark. Bring your library books. Like, I can sit on my phone, you know, and it takes ten seconds to send that out to parents really quick. Or um, tomorrow's your favorite team day, and of course, because Mrs. Wilkinson loves to do that, it looks really cute too. <laughs> so. Um, you can still, like our first grade newsletter, you can absolutely upload a PDF of your newsletter or of your calendar or your school newsletter, whatever you want to, and push that home or with the students also through Seesaw. So um, if parents wanted to print that out, they can download it and print it out right from the app too. Um, but this is just, it's been so easy on us this year to push information home. And we haven't even done a newsletter yet this year, and I'm not sure we will because we're pushing it all of those things out every single week mm -hmm. um, right on Seesaw. We push out different things about field trip, we'll already push that out. So we don't even have a need for it. Um, we talked earlier too about behavior plans. We, it's an instant way to communicate with the parents without having to take a notebook back and forth. We've done that before. Emails home, we've done that before. But this is a way that it can instantly go to the parents each day. We had one little guy on a behavior plan for Every day I had to, morning and afternoon, go through, one, two, three, get a rating, wanted notes, and it was really awesome. The parents knew exactly how his day had gone. They could respond at home. If they had questions, they would let me know. Um, and we created that together, and it worked really well for him. It was a great. Um, the one, I tried the one on the left with the little guy, and his behaviors were not quite such a big concern. Um, but parents just really wanted to know how it was today. And so this little guy and I, at the end of every day, it was just a quick meeting, like, hey, what did you think today? How did it go? And what we were really working on was like, did you cry today for no reason? Or did we get through the whole day without crying? And so we would talk about it, and it was really quick. <coughs> and so um, we used the note feature, and we sent it all home. And so um, some days, if we had time, he got to type it. Some days, I got to type it. We always got to pick the emoji of how his day went. <laughs> and so it was a pretty good day. So he got the sunglasses. What's really cool, though, is right down here, um, I can already tell mom and dad had seen it. Mom liked it. Dad commented <coughs> quickly. And so um, he was a kid who walked out to their car on our walking school bus. And by the time he got out to the car, mom had already seen that. Like, I'm sure they saw just things on her phone. Like, oh, here's the note. How was his day? And that was the way they could start that conversation. Like, that's awesome. I saw you had a pretty great day. And so I'm sure it spurred some really great conversations at home, even when the emojis were not so happy. Um, we get feedback. 
constantly from parents about CESA. I am a parent in my school as well, and my daughter's teachers use it, and I absolutely love <coughs> it um, from that perspective. But there, it, it's gotten even bigger than just knowing. You know, I had a student who didn't want to come to the first day of school, and I had posted a video of me reading a book the night before school on Seesaw. I read like the night before first grade. I can't even remember what book it was. But hearing my voice, <coughs> knowing I was nervous too, got him to come into the building the next day. And so parents have just talked about how much it's changed their conversations, it's changed the way their kids feel about sharing with them. It's just been a really uh, great way for us to connect with families that we had never had before. So that's just, yes, I'm also, I'm not a parent in our school, my kids go to a different school. Um, <coughs> they don't utilize these that as much as I would love. Um, they do, they dabble. Uh, I wish I saw even more, but um, you know, I'm the, busy mom who's at work and my kids are involved in X, Y, and Z after school. And so sometimes our conversations about school are limited and they're quick and um, being able to get that glimpse inside their day has just been fantastic for us. Uh, Seesaw really wants the teachers to feel like they know what they're doing. They want you to have everything you need. Facebook has a Seesaw teachers group, if you're on Facebook, that posts ideas constantly. Um, the ambassadors have a group too, so if you would become an ambassador, you would have access to that. They're on Twitter, they're on Instagram. People post ideas all the time, and we get ideas constantly from that. Uh, the community of Seaside teachers is really grown. Um, I think like about <coughs> that their um, help desk or help section. Um, you can submit tickets they, for a lot of things. Um, Seesaw rolled out, and I'm sure all of you know, a ton of new tools this summer. Um, and you know, when you try new things that are amazing, sometimes it's not perfect. And so um, if you are having troubles, uh, and I know we saw a lot of this in the Ambassador Facebook group, um, you know, the, the tools won't move so my kids can draw it at the bottom of the page, or things like that. Um, people were submitting tickets, people were getting in touch with Seesaw, and they are quick to respond. They are replying to threads on Facebook. Um, yeah, we know, we're working on that. Thanks for letting us know. Keep us updated, you guys. Like, they want to know what's working, what's not. Um, they are really, really helpful. And if you have ideas, they want to know what features you want. We requested a lot of the features that they brought on. We requested multiple times last year, so we were pretty excited that they created those. We keep requesting for more features, so we hope there's another update soon. <laughs> um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I have actually listened to a couple of these. Um, they, yeah, on their website, there are all sorts of webinars that you can join in for free. Um, they're really good. They're quick. Um, and they are useful. There is just a lot of really great things that they can share. Um, I know this summer, <coughs> being ambassadors, when they rolled out, I should probably know what I'm talking about when um, everyone comes back and they're learning all this, you know, all the new things. Um, and so that's what I did listen to, and it was really helpful to get a chance. They're um, usually screencasting, using the new tools, and explaining things. Um, they're really fantastic. So it's definitely worth um, checking out. You know, if you have questions, there might already be some PD available for you. Privacy. Nothing is public, nothing can get out. They do ask you to protect like your QR code so that like not to post that so people can access the kids' pictures and videos. We have quite a few kids who are not able to be photographed at school, but we can put it on Seesaw because it's um, private. We were so worried about Sorry, we really fast. Does anybody have questions or anything that you're wondering about? Or if you want to get on Seesaw and play a little bit? Um, and if you <coughs> have questions or explore the activities library. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Stick your hand up in the air if you want us to help you out with anything. Um, find us on email on our presentation. Um, we'd be happy to help. So thank you guys so much.